In this video, I'm gonna talk about Infernax. Welcome to the fair country of Europe. The year is the extra dark ages, and when I mean dark, I mean 99% Cocoa Dark. Hell is a real place, evil is breeding like rabbits, and the people live in fear of God. Yourself and your holy convictions are the only things capable of saving the realm. Unless you decide otherwise. Because, you see, everybody is asking you to do good, but nobody is putting a hard obligation on you. If you want to walk the straight and narrow, you are at liberty to do so. If you want to become the biggest asshole that ever assholed in the entire history of assholing, you can make choices that take you in this direction, and there are achievements and endings for these kinds of playthrough. Why you would want to be a gigantic asshole considering you are playing a holy christian crusader is beyond me. Actually, no, wait, back it up. Nonetheless, there is some merit in exploring both sides of the ethical equation since it will lead to different plot lines and a few gameplay changes that become fairly substantial once you get deeper into it. The core experience remains largely the same, but some spells will be different, and some of the enemies you will face will depend on whether or not you side with humanity. Controls involve a jump button, an attack button, a magic button, an item button, and then a handful of combos that serve both as new attacks and as movement upgrades to reach places that were inaccessible before. The latter is the obvious use, and the attack portion is mostly a token way of protecting yourself while you barrel in every direction under your own momentum. If there is anything that you absolutely do not want in this game, it is to turn the control scheme into Sonic the Hedgehog. Therefore, it is a requirement to use these abilities sparingly. The reason is simple, you will need to do some heavy platforming. I cannot figure out a way to express that with an elegant euphemism. It does not necessarily demand pixel perfection, but it will feel pretty dang close on several occasions, and having complete control over yourself even when airborne is a welcome simplification. It works alright until you come up to those rare points in which you need to combine platforming with some of your newly acquired movement abilities, and a few of these challenges will quite simply put an end to your game on the spot. So, here is the point of uneasiness. Getting hit by an enemy takes out a few of your health points, but you can keep chugging along. Falling down a bottomless pit instantly kills you. Getting hit by an enemy knocks you back. Getting knocked back into a bottomless pit instantly kills you and then fucks your corpse in the ass. My worst enemy is not the bunch of zombies and skeletons that stand in my way, it is the set of moving platforms above a floor that shines by its own absence. Worst comes to worst, you can always switch to casual mode to grant yourself extra save points along the way, and if what I have read is correct, you can do so with no penalty. Whether you play with the easy or the hard difficulty is an entirely personal choice, and the game does not judge you for it in any way except for one Steam achievement. There is always the possibility that my controller is to blame for it. I played the game using a PS3 controller that is by now so crusty, greasy and worn that I have to boil it for 15 minutes before using it. There have been multiple incidents in which I wanted to use the uppercut attack while mid-jump only for myself to attack straight ahead and then plummet to my death. Fourth dungeon, fuck you in particular, and I hope that you are cursed with lottery tickets that give nothing but free place for the rest of your life, constantly edging you with the agonizing possibility of becoming a millionaire, and yet never letting you experience the release of closure one way or another. A bunch of people are going to rise up and say that this punishing platforming was the norm back in the 90s. And they are right. There is also a reason that the practice stopped at the end of the 90s. Bottomless pits were a way to milk longevity and difficulty out of a cartridge that one could casually blast through in a couple of hours once they had mastered the gameplay. And the modern 10-hour AAA title has rendered these bullshit difficulties obsolete. 
Speaking of which, a first playthrough of this one, Blind, takes about 6 hours. You will probably get the good but not great ending, which should motivate you into doing a new playthrough to get the perfect ending, and this will add another 3 or 4 hours to your tally. Since you have the somewhat evil ending, the fully evil ending, the redemption ending, and the last final true ending that wraps everything together, you actually have to replay the entire game something like six times so as to experience all the content. By this, I mean that you start from the very beginning with no cash, no experience, no upgrades, and you go through the whole adventure as if you never did it before. Naturally, knowing all the pitfalls over subsequent playthroughs will allow you to fast track a few sections, but you will still have to grind for money and experience to a certain extent if you want to put the odds in your favor. Fact remains that it feels like a lot of busy work if all you chase after is a different ending. The anachronism cannot be ignored. It shows up in this uncompromising way where it holds no fantasy over itself and it is fully cognizant that it will not necessarily please everyone. It feels like gazing out to a movie set, actresses preparing, all neatly trimmed and well researched to correspond to the likes of the moment, and then in comes this one girl. She rocks a poofy glam haircut, she talks on a beige cell phone made entirely of angles, and she's got a full bush. And what sells it is the smug, self-aware smile she gives you when you double-take. It is a matter of course that the actual longevity will boil down to how much fondness one can hold over their days of youth. I know where I stand seeing as I mistyped the word to fondless when I wrote up my script for this. The video game memories were not terrible, but despite me having a great library of classic games, I end up going for modern more often than not, or for neo-retro where most of the kinks of the bygone age have been worked out. The return to form is always painful considering the strides we have made since then. I would have taken a more streamlined version of this. This is my personal opinion, which is internet legalese for I believe this is a hot take and I hope no unfortunate accident befalls me as a result. The game does have classic style precision and control tightness as a strength, and I would gladly take as much of this as I can. I want to swing my mace into a face. The problem with bottomless pits is that I cannot kill them in revenge for all that they have done to me. Maybe it is an unhealthy obsession, but it feels like it comes at me again and again. I think I am done with bottomless pits, and then they show up yet once more. Their mere existence is a problem, in that they are capable of causing an insane amount of damage, and we should know better in this day and age than to tolerate them at all. Yet they hold on, seemingly eternal and untouchable, condemning us to endure them for god knows how much longer. Whenever something happens to make us feel powerless, it is usually by their hand but we cannot attack them back. And thus the sad conclusion is that the only thing we can do is vent our frustration on the nearest poor bastard who happens to walk by. In short, this game is the 1%. Hey! 